Today I'm installing the Moto Gadget, Moto Blaze disc bar and indicators on the BMW. The first one is already installed, so I thought I'd show you the process on the other side. It's pretty straightforward, but we're doing it with a little twist. We're gonna use one of the smallest water seal plugs that you can actually fit inside the handlebars, the Miso P25 from Molex. And that way you can always detach the indicator in case you need to exchange one, or if you want to change the grips, you can take this off. So that is very, very handy. Let me show you how it works. The first thing that you need to do is the wire routing. And I already did that when installing the Moi button inside the handlebars. If you want to check out that video, I'm going to leave it right up there or down below in the description. But basically, you need to drill a hole in the bottom of your handlebars where you can run the positive lead for the right hand and the left hand indicators and the two ground wires through and then back to wherever you need to hook that up. We already have the two positive leads for the indicators coming from the output side of the M unit. They run down here through this clamp inside the handlebars and then they come across here and now we just gonna install the indicator. For that, as I've said, we're gonna use the Mizu P25 plugs from Molex. The only thing that you need to watch out for when you buy these is that you get the right crimp connectors for this type of plug. There are several different plugs from Molex that are called Mizu P25 and I bought 200 for each male and female of the wrong trim terminals and then I had to get the right ones after I figured out that they actually don't fit. The only difference that there is between the two crimp connectors is that the one for these plugs has a little slot in the top and the other one is closed. So make sure that you get the right one because then they're actually quite simple to put together. If you have the wrong ones, it doesn't work even though they look super, super similar. The other thing that you need is a fitting pair of crimp pliers. Fortunately, I had this generic pair of crimp pliers that actually fits for these crimp connectors. It has relatively small openings, but it is the same shape like you would use for like the regular ring terminals and stuff like that. I'm quickly gonna measure the opening of the one that I use for the Mizu connectors. So you can maybe double check that is 2.35 millimeters. So if you can find one of these, it, it doesn't have any labels on there. So I can't really tell you. And I bought this like years ago. So I also can't link it, unfortunately. But if you buy one of these, these, then you can actually crimp those. But if you wanted to get the official crimp pliers, then you would be down like 450 bucks, which is ridiculous to just install two indicators. So try to find one that actually works. Um, just do a few test crimps and you'll be fine. So in that regard, I would also suggest you get like a few more crimp terminals than you actually need. So you can experiment a little bit and see if your crimp pliers work. If a crimp, for example, goes wrong, you can do it again. So then you're on the safe side. Now, if you have grips that are closed on the sides, you need to chop the sides off so they actually sit flush with the end of the handlebars. Now the next step, and that is a very important one, is to grab a towel, a screwdriver, and some acetone or some brake cleaner so we can actually clean the inside of the handlebars. And that's so important because otherwise the indicators don't really sit securely in there. So now I would suggest to leave about like two or three centimeters sticking out here and then cut the wires there. Now for these tiny crimp connectors, we only need to strip about two millimeters of the insulation. And you can either do that with a wire stripper or if you don't have enough space to work with that, you can also do it with a precision knife. For this side of the connection, I like to use this part of the plug, the longer part, and that needs the male crimp connectors. And here is that little opening that I was talking about. Now, when it comes to crimping these, it makes sense to pay attention to the orientation of the crimp connector because that determines the orientation of the plug. I would like to have this little clip facing upwards. So we need to make sure that we crimp the terminals on the right way. I'm gonna link you the official Molex P25 manual down below that explains step-by-step step how the plugs go together and also how you can deepen them. That's very handy to have. But with that, now we can move on and actually crimp the first two male connectors on here. And how I like to do this, I take one of the crimp connectors and already place it into the right opening right here and then squeeze the pliers until it's kind of like firmly in there, but not squeezed yet all the way. And then I put the crimp connector as far out as possible. So the rear wings sit as far in as possible and the front doesn't get squished. That is very important. And then I double check the orientation. So if you want to have the clip at the top, this flat piece of the crimp connector has to be at the bottom. And then you just take the wire and push it in there so that the copper part sits in the front wings and the insulation sits in the rear wings. And here you can see that the rear part of the crimp sometimes doesn't get crimped all the way. That might be because of the generic crimp pliers or because the wire is too small. What you can do then is you can take the crimp pliers and just crimp the rear part that goes over the insulation with the front part of the jaws, that the smaller part of the jaws like this. 
It might bend the whole thing a little bit, but you can bend that back. It's not 100% ideal if you have to do that because you need to be very careful that you don't destroy the crimp connector. But at the same time, if the rear part of the crimp is too wide open, then it doesn't go into the plug housing. So you have to see and do a few tests how your setup works. So now for the second wire, we need to make sure that we get the same orientation of the trim terminal. Always do a good pull test because you rather want it to come off now than once everything is installed. Now before I put the housing on, because these wires are very interchangeable, I'm going to do the side of the indicator. And once we have that installed, we can determine which of these wires goes into each of the opening of the plug housing. If you get the same ones from Motor Gadget, you have to make sure that you get one specifically for the left side and one for the right side. They have a little L or a little R right here on the inside, so you know which one is for which side. And then we need to install some of the hardware that you get with the indicators. You can check in the manual which of the hardware pieces you need to install for your specific handlebars. For the 22 millimeter steel bars that are run on the BMW, we first need an O-ring, then a washer, then the specific rubber piece, and in the end, a nut to secure everything. What I also did additionally was to add a little bit of heat shrink right here to the wires where they come out of the screw just to protect them a little bit more. So now the next step is to cut those wires and I leave like five centimeters or so and just cut right here shortly after the heat shrink. Once you have the female terminals trimmed onto the indicator wires, you can push both of them into the smaller part of the plug housing. Now that I have this side done, I know that I want the positive wire on this side and the ground wire on that side. So with the clip facing up, you can just insert the wires into the plug housing and you'll hear them click once they are fully secured. Right, double check, positive, positive, ground, ground. Now the last thing that we need to do before we can actually install this inside the handlebars is to tighten this nut a little bit so the rubber expands. And you want to tighten it so much that you can just barely squeeze it in there. You just have to experiment with it a little bit. Like so, carefully push the plug in. And that is too easy, so we need to tighten this a little bit more. As you can see, it starts to get a little bit wider here. So now since this is already quite tight, what I want to do is I want to have the logo facing a little bit to the left because in the end we can turn it clockwise and it tightens a little bit more, but we probably won't get a full turn so that the logo is back on top, which is very important for the orientation of the indicator. So just experiment with that. Now I'm just gonna squeeze this in here. like this and then just turn it clockwise until the logo is at the top. And that is how you install your bar and indicators and in specifically these Motor Gadget Moblaze disc with the Mizu P25 plugs. You can use this method for, I guess, basically any bind indicators, even though these are the first ones that I've installed and they look amazing. Let's do a little test and see how they look in action. That looks so cool. And here you can see why the orientation is so important. The front is a lot brighter than the back. If you want to check out the rest of the wiring videos, I'm going to link you the playlist right here. I hope this helps you. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.